Hey, what's up everybody? Jim here again with another Gmod video. And this time it's a bit of an interactive one. Because I'm going to teach you how to build uh, a steam locomotive base in my style. This is how I basically build steam locomotive bases. Because, you know, I'm part of the Gmod train build uh, community, as you may have noticed. And what I'm going to do here is build myself uh, the base for an S100 locomotive. Now what I usually do is, um, first of all, I'm a PHX builder, so I use the old so-called PHX uh, track, basically taken from the Half-Life games, which partly take place in Russia, I believe. I mean, yes, there's a new thinner track gauge called Real Standard Gauge, but I don't like to use that. So in case anybody wants me to build Real Standard Gauge locomotives, not going to happen. I actually despise Real Standard Gauge. Are we clear? Okay, I'm a PHX builder, and I'm a prop builder, so I'm old school. Even though I'm relatively new to train build. Uh, but anyway, let's get started. Because I'm going to build an S100 locomotive, and one thing that I usually do is um, I always look up the friggin' uh, real-world diameter of the driving wheels in inches. Like only the driving wheels, I do the rest basically kind of from guessing. But yeah, real world diameter, I look that up in inches. And then I, uh, the real world driving wheel diameter that is. And then I look up the nearest equivalent here in Bobster's um, uh, train pack. We go to wheels, standard, but actually PHX, but never mind. But it's, but one important thing to know, always pick axles. Never pick individual wheels. Now the driving wheel diameter on an S100 is, uh, excuse me, that that is four foot six or 54 inches. So we can actually use a double wheel size 54. There we go. We got three driving axles out, and there we go. And we're going to precision them to make sure that they're nice and straight and. Uh, basically rotate it to the nearest 90 degrees and then we're going to basically start attaching the driving axles we'll start with the middle one strangely enough because that's actually the easiest one so by the way I did forget how to actually uh, change the grid pattern on uh, on these precision grids because when you start out with them you actually they're nowhere near as precise as this you um, start off with a relatively small uh, number of large squares before actually having a much larger amount of smaller squares. There is a function to actually make them more precise, but I forgot how to do that, so after I've finished filming uh, this uh, part, I'll ask a friend of mine how to do that again so I can show you. But with the precision alignment tool, what you need to do is go to the red option here, hit pause, well, we, we did a mass center point 1 here on the driving axle, and then you need to get a hit pause point 2. Yeah, hit pause for point 2. Here on the middle, on the grid, on the underside of the block. You may have noticed that we have a size 12 by 192 by 12 beam out. That is going to serve as our main frame. As the basic frame of the engine. So next, let me spawn in some uh, mass center points 3 and 5 for the front and rear driving wheels, and then we're going to look up uh, then we're going to do some more uh, hit pause points. Four and six. Let's see. Uh, last time I had it by six and a half squares down. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Point four goes to here. Uh, hang on. A friend of mine actually uh, got into my shed. Uh, sorry, Michael. I'm still busy filming the tutorial right now. I'm. Uh, Things kind of went wrong during previous recording attempts, so I apologize. I need a little more privacy. There we go. And move that to there. Oh, and I just realized that I kind of cocked up on uh, one of my points. Namely point four. God damn it. Let's do the, let's redo the counting. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. It needs to be uh, there. There need. That's where point four has to be. So there we 
go. Oh, let's get that driving axle properly rotated and then precisioned like so. There we go. Now, next thing, even though you can actually do it later or wait till the end for phase one, this is phase one by the way, weigh down your parts, but I like to do it now. Base block, 50,000, and most of your driving wheels, 10,000. Just the outer axle, so the, drive, so the wheels on the first and third axle. When it comes to the second axle, different story, because we need a gate for that. In order to make the in order to make this base go around curves, so if we go to the wire and then click the gate tool. You notice that we start off with a uh, microchip that says wire mod on it. That's a bad gate for this, so we need something different, and that is going to be this size 12 Bobster cube. No, wait, not Bobster cube, S prop cube. Pardon me, but we need to turn it into a gate. So we right click on that cube here in the menu and copy the idea to the clipboard. Then, if the console behaves, which it does, we type in the uh, command wire underscore gates underscore model and then we paste our uh, part ID and BOOM! We have a new size 12 cube as our gate. You notice the yellow, uh, I mean the blue outlining around it? And then we just use a uh, mass center point number 7 and pop that to number two. There we go. Which is the hit pause point on the middle, in the middle of the underside of the frame. So there we go. Next, with the multi parent tool, uh, you can also copy these settings. Uh, you parent that driving axle to the gate, and then we basically weigh down the gate, also to ten thousand, because it will be like the driving axle. Basically, it means that the wheels on the middle driving axle won't touch the track. They'll basically function like the flangeless or blind driving wheels on uh, most six-coupled steam locomotives made out of LEGO to enable them to go around those very tight curves on official LEGO trackage. So, yeah. Next, with the access center tool, just again, copy these settings. We uh, basically make our access points. Click on the side of the wheel, and on the side of the... Uh, base block for the first and third axle, and for the second axle, uh, just click on the gate and then on the side of the base block. Then, with the ball joint advanced, or rather ball socket advanced tool, we need to um, make a chain of ball joint constraints. Again, copy these settings. No limits on force and torque, no friction, free movement enabled, no collide entities disabled. All three axes have like 0 0.2 uh, units of motion, like from minus 0 0.1 to plus 0 0.1 on X, Y, and Z. Okay, got that. So, make a chain of ball joint to advance constraints from driving axle 1 to the gate on axle 2, from there to axle 3, and from 3 back to 1. And then, if we did it properly, We'll make a test dupe. Oh, get that on the track nicely. And by the way, I will explain why I picked body group 6 on Bobster's wheels towards the end of the freaking tutorial. So, yeah. But there you go. We have six little driving wheels, all spinning in unison on a little base block, and it works perfectly. The weight helps to ensure a smooth roll, at least for now. The axis constraints obviously is what allows them to rotate, and that chain of events ball joint constraints, or ball socket constraints rather, is what causes them to rotate in unison. So there we go, phase one completed. Now for phase two, the coupling rod, or connecting rod. Okay, welcome to part two, the coupling rods. But before I start, you may have noticed that my grid is looking very different with only four squares in it with only uh, four squares in it. Basically, I found out, thanks to my friend uh, Dinkins there, how to change the friggin' uh, preciseness of the grid. So you go to your options tool here, with uh, I mean the options tab, with the third one here with the wrench, 
and on Smart Snap here under the Player tab, you basically uh, edit the maximum number of squares on your grid. See? That way you can actually make a much more precise grid. Now sure, 16, that's already fine. But sometimes you need it to be much more precise. So we added it to 64. There you go. That's how you make your grid much more accurate. I actually just learned that myself. Or rather, I relearned it myself because, again, I forgot how to do it. Anyway, back to building the coupling rod. And we're going to start here. I already have a handful of props out. or yeah, Just three props. We're going to start by getting the friggin' measurement stick out. Right here. And we're going to distance the... We're going to measure the distance from the... Crank uh, from the crank pin on the first driving axle to that of the rear driving axle. As you can see, just about 114 as prop units in the in the very high 113 point now uh, point nine. But as you can see, when we look at the plates with the size six plates, we don't have a six by 114. We can only choose between a six by 108 and six by 120. Starting with the number 96, instead of having uh, increments of 6, they suddenly go to increments of 12 for, for a brief bit. So, so we already have a 6x120 played out right here. Now I'm going to film this segment in a few uh, in two uh, uh, recordings. First I'm going to show you how I'm going to build the coupling rod here. Okay, so we take precision alignment and just use hit pause points all the way through for now or at least two hit pause points hit pause one on that middle uh, grid point here on this side of the plate and hit pause point two on the crank pin of the middle driving axle so perfectly then you may notice these very small cubes here which are listed as size 3x3x3 three by three by three plates I don't know either. Those are just straight up little blocks or cubes to me, but I guess they are too small to, to count as regular blocks or cubes. Yeah, I hate it too. So, I'm going to pop some hit, po so, some hit pause points on those. Three on this one, five on that one. Again, I like to have, I work with a system where the even numbers receive the uneven numbers. So the uneven numbers move to the even ones. So 3 moves to 4, right there, and 5 moves to 6, right there. The reason I do it is because when we check the middle line of longitude here, which is this vertical double line on the wheel, it doesn't match with any of the vertical lines here on the grid of the plate. But when we uh, pop these little size 3 cubes there, hey, look at that. The black line here going down on these cubes matches pretty well with the middle line of longitude on the wheel. Perfect. So we're going to get rid of those uh, points. And then we're going to... Oh, wait. Actually, let me uh, make sure that those are precision and we're going to do it again. One sec. Okay, we got everything precision and reapplied, so that's good. Oh wait, there's actually one thing that I forgot to do. And that is uh, pulling the friggin... That is actually pulling the damn... Um, that is pulling the damn main portion of the rod uh, away from the driving wheels by 40% of its... Uh, thickness because at the moment you may notice hey the, the, the coupling rod is actually kind of clipping into the driving wheels we don't want that so I always pull it out by 40% and we're going to reapply those little s oh wait but are those right anyway those are those are points three and four there we go and five and six there. Okay. Now we can get rid of these points, and then we'll plop in some cylinders, which will serve as our friggin' uh, bearings. 
We'll use a 9x6 cylinder for the front bearing, a 9x3 cylinder for the middle bearing, and a big fat 12x12 12 12 cylinder for the rear bearing, because that's where the crank axle is. The rear pair of driving wheels have the crank axle on them, so that's where all the rods of the drive, the running gear come together. So, what we're going to do, easy enough actually, we'll start in the middle this time, after I precisioned all these bearings. There we go. So, hit pause. Point one and two. Easy peasy in the center, right there. And then, another easy one, we'll do the rear bearing now. Mass center, point three, corresponding with hit pause, point four, right there. And boom. And then finally, the slut, the one that is a little bit more complicated, the fun bearing here. Oh wait, actually, no, 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 sorry, I meant to do mass center, point five, corresponding with hit pause, point six. Again, the black lines on those little cubes match up pretty damn well with the middle line of longitude on the wheel on the grid on the wheel so there we go but you may notice hey that bearing is a bit too far forward so we push that in by 50 percent so when you have the precision alignment tool out if you take this box you will push or pull uh, a prop by its by a percentage not individual s props units so there you go and r is for pulling but we don't want it to be pulled we want it to be pushed and you do that with the right mouse button. So there, there we go. Bearings are in place. Now we very carefully remove that size 3 cube in the middle. And there we go. Now what you want to do is spawn in more uh, points. Delete the previous one. And spawn in some new ones. Mass center points 1 and 3 there. And then we'll use hit pause for points 2 and 4. These points are going to be uh, important for the axis constraints that you're going to make with the precision alignment tool for attaching the coupling rod. And you need that by, by using a line. So in the blue section here for lines in the precision alignment tool, red for points, green is for planes, but I don't know how to use that. So I just use red and blue, points and lines. Line 1, with hit pause hit normal, you click the middle point on the grid on the top of the block. And then hit normal, it uh, doesn't necessarily matter where, just click on a grid point on the side to make the line go out to the side. But it is handy if you do it as close to the middle as possible. If you see a red cross, that's good, purple cross, not so much. So there you go. Oh, and by the way, to lock onto a point, press E while you're, while you're aiming. That will give you a more precise aim, so yeah. Anyway, we have our line set up, now we have to attach the props. One, to the front driving axle. Two, to the main portion of the coupling rod. Oh wait, I forgot something, but we're already busy. Three, to the friggin' uh, rear driving axle. Four, to the main portion of the coupling rod again. I forgot to add a gate to this... Um, To this uh, rod and now we're going back to using the the wire mount chip because what you want to do actually I suppose before you did all these points let me just get rid of them is you want to parent the bearings and in case you have them rod extensions to that chip and then parent the wire mount chip which is your gate to the main portion of the coupling rod like that then I was uh, spawn a duplicate of the finished rod to be ready for attachment once this rod has been attached. So let me quickly redo those points again. We still have a line, so that's good. One there, three there. Let's just attach those. I didn't mean to move the entity, I meant to attach the point. There we go. Now, 
we press R while we have uh, our precision alignment tool out and you want to go to the tab with constraints with the little anchor and then uh, take these settings no limit on your torque and force, no friction, no collide ena labeled, uh, uh, enabled click line 1 and make an axis constraint between points 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 Hopefully that should be, uh, you know, friggin' phase two. All good. And there we have our coupling rod. Looking good. Very, very nice. And it's better than the previous time because for some reason the, on the previous time it kept dripping down. But anyway, that is, uh, that is phase two completed. Now let me uh, repeat this on the other side, off camera, and then we'll get on to phase three, which is the last phase that I'm capable of, the driving rod and piston rod, and in turn the slider block for your cylinder. See you then. Okay, so welcome to phase three, which is attaching the driving rod and the piston rod and all that stuff. Though first you may wonder, hey, that's one of those, that's the other size three cube, because you may remember we didn't remove that one. Well. We didn't necessarily have to remove it, but besides, it was kind of impossible to remove it to begin with because it was stuck within that big bearing. But, you know, we can get rid of that now. Besides, we didn't need those uh, size 3 cubes to be part of the coupling rod anyway. We just needed them as temporary uh, support pieces to actually plop the bearings neatly towards the center of the middle line of lo longitude on the wheels, remember? Yes, so... This one goes away. Now, driving rod. If you haven't already, take your base with the newly fitted coupling rods and have everything precisioned. So the block itself, all the driving axles, and then the rods. So, the measuring stick, or in case you're uh, perverted, the measuring dick. We measure from the middle point here of the front of the bearing to the very center here of the wheel on the, f on the first axle. 115.3 S-prop units. Sounds like we need another 6 by 120 plate. So look at that. Equally sized driving rods to the coupling rods. I don't think you get to see that very often. So we'll precision that. But, while we're also here, disable the collisions on it. Very important for later. Now, uh, we're going to actually do uh, set two points and two lines up right now. Mass center point one and hit pause point two on the surface of the rear end bearing. You know, crank axle, duh. And, oh wait, I had to stick around there for a little longer. Oh wait, the cross is still red. Yep, that's good. And then line one, hit pause at normal and hit normal there. Boom. Line one on the on the big end bearing. And line two on the middle point on the top grid of the base block. Again, hit normal to make it go out to the side. And then hit pause point three, which we're gonna move to one. And point three is gonna be here right on the edge of that that edge point on the grid there. Move that to three. Then we'll get our, uh, then we'll press R and go to the rotation tab, select line one, and we have to rotate it uh, in negative, in a negative way, and then we'll just uh, kind of do a bit of uh, guessing. Because the whole point is now to get that middle line of uh, latitude to match up with the middle line of latitude on the wheel. So the middle line of latitude of the rod, so the double line here on the rod to the horizontal double line on the wheel. Five is a bit, is not enough. Let's try 10. That's obviously too much. So let's cut it down a bit. Let's say seven degrees. Nope, that's too much. Let's try six. It's a bit of a guessing game. Six is too much. 5.5. .5. 
Perfect. 5.5. Okay. Then we can grant then we can get rid of point three on the there on the driving rod. I will pop a hit pause point four right there. And next it's a case of getting some cylinders out here for the piston rods. Nowadays I prefer to use size uh, diameter six for the piston rods. Doesn't necessarily have the biggest uh, the biggest one, so we'll use six by fifty-four. And like with the driving rod, disable the collisions beforehand. And you guessed it, we're gonna pop a new hit pause point three there and move that to point four. Now, once again it's time to make some constraints and attach props. You'll need an axis constraint between points 1 and 2, right there, so we'll attach point 1. I think some will be, some people would recommend attaching uh, attaching them to the block here, at the on the, uh, to, to the block that we used as the gate here on the second axle. But I actually prefer attaching it to the, to the axle itself that has the crank on it. If it, to have, if it happens to have a gate, attach it to the crank. So like if this was a uh, eight coupled engine, like if we were making an S160, naturally it would have eight driving wheels and we would put a gate there, then we would attach it to the gate. But as is, we'll attach it directly to the axle itself. So point one to the axle, point two to the newly positioned driving rod. Go to constraints again, select line two here. We already have points one and two selected, create constraint, and then simple enough, ball joint without any force or torque limit, and no collide enabled as well, between 3 and 4. Finally, this is the part where it, where sometimes it would really, it really likes to go crazy, a friggin' slider block. And we use a size 6 cube by that, that is weighed down to 1000. So, we have it precisioned. Select option 8, which is the slider. Click here on what will become the front of the block. Click on the... Click on the front of the piston rod. Twice. There we go. Now it's locked in. Now we can push it backwards. And for this, nowadays I use a percentage of 205% to push it down the piston rod. There we go. And finally, one of only four welding constraints you may need in total to build the locomotive. Two of them are for these slider blocks, so click there and attach it to the base. And hopefully, that works just fine. Let's give that a little twist. Well, it's a little janky, but I think that's just uh, breaking itself in. So there we go. Now let me actually uh, quickly build the other side so we can uh, see the finished result of the completed base. I'll be back in a jiffy. Okay, we're back for the final uh, bit of this tutorial. Not that I'm going to teach you anything new because basically what would have been phase four, which is building an eccentric rod for wall charts or Baker style valve gear, that is actually something that I can't do. Yes, even though I can build steam engine bases, even I, even I am limited in what I can do. So, valve gear is sadly left to a friend of mine called Rads, and I do have to pester him for him for that times. I'm sorry, but let's actually see if uh, this works. And ooh, we have a little bit of a malfunctioning rod there. But we can actually uh, remedy that somewhat, because another trick, uh, some what sometimes help, uh, what sometimes helps is reducing the weight of your rod props. So we'll change the weight to one on both the piston rods and the driving rods or main rods. And hey, look at that! That actually straightens it out beautifully. So. There you have it. The base for my S100 locomotive, which I'm building, or which I will be building over the course of uh, the next month in little bits at a time. And now you know how to build a 
uh, steam engine base in Gary's Mod. Now have fun building everybody. Oh, and what it and I guess that at this point I should also explain why I used quarter driving wheels. Well, simply put, it has to do with a little bit of real world steam locomotive science. Uh, basically, let me actually get a different engine out for a moment. Hopefully I still have it. Uh, there we go, there's a public piece of shit. So, okay, this uses a hollow a hollow wheel base, which I don't know how to do, but it actually serves. That's actually a good example of how not to do it. Well, all these driving wheels here and the coupling rods that you see, those are fake. They actually don't exist because you can see the a friggin' uh, six-wheeled bogey from a class 37 diesel locomotive serving as the main prop. But anyway. The maker of this uh, wheelbase for this rather poor looking 1400, he horribly fucked up. Because you can see the driving wheels and coupling rods are offset here by 180 degrees. So now that the, so not that the crank pins are towards the back here, they are towards the front here. And on a real world steam engine, this would make, in, this would make it impossible for it to set off. Because within the cylinders, the piston walls have both reached the dead spot. One is at the very front of the cylinder cavity, the other is at the very rear of the cylinder cavity. In both cases, there's no real room for the steam to push the piston rod. And as a result, if the driving wheels are positioned like this, the engine won't be able to set off on its own. And a little bit of trivia, a little bit of trivia here, if you built your Lego steam locomotives like this, by having the driving wheels 180 degrees apart of each other, they actually won't have a very smooth ride. Compared to this here, uh, yes again this is prop based, not this is prop built, not hollow built, but you may have noticed, quartered driving wheels. That's all well and good. Because, because hey, even if the crank pins are all the way towards the back on the left side here, you may have noticed that on the right hand side they're not. They're down. It didn't it also would have mattered and it wouldn't matter if they were up all of them. It also wouldn't matter if they were all up. You would still have the same effect. If the crank pins are either down or up, it means that the wall of the piston rod is within the middle of the cylinder cavity. Meaning that there is room for the steam to push the to either push the cylinder back or forth. In this case, uh, if the engine is going forward, towards the back. And that allows the engine to set off on its own. And on LEGO locomotives, quarter driving wheels actually give a smoother ride. And it does so on real engines. So if you're going to build a steam locomotive base, I would always recommend Bobster driving wheels and quarter them. You may decide what uh, style you want. Six is, these, uh, is the standard driving wheels. Quite a few spokes, small kind of weights. But we also have body group 7, which is uh, fewer spokes, but with uh, larger kind of weights. Let me actually uh, move that a little further back. We also have uh, body group 8, uh, which are completely solid wheels, but they do have crank pin connections. Let me actually just get another uh, spare driving axle for that. Another size 54 will do fine. So let me. Gonna put that one real quick into uh, body group eight. Body group eight. There you see. You see, there's the crank pin attachment, and there too. And they're quartered. That's good. So let me throw that one back to six. And then body group nine. If you want to look at really American, you have box buck wheels here. But these only exist on the on the PHX. Uh, on the PHX uh, axles and wheels, which are, as you can see, on the standard uh, sub. We, gauge 1 is for what we call the 2-foot narrow gauge, and they don't have uh, box box body groups. So yeah. So uh, basically, when it comes to driving wheels, I would definitely recommend ab avoiding body groups 2, 3, and 5. Which are the regular uh, driving wheels, the large 
the large counterweight driving wheels and the solid driving wheels, but with the 180 degree offset, which you don't want. For non-driven wheels, body groups 1 and 4 are good. 1 is standard spoke, 4 is completely solid. For driving wheels, again, 6, 7, 8, and 9. But there you go. There's the base of my S100, and, that, and again, I'll build that over the course of the following month. Oh, and because I haven't mentioned it yet this June, ink to all my LGBTQ subscribers out there, I hope you had a good Pride Month, which is still going on for a few more days. So, even if I'm very late to the punch, still, happy Pride Month. And, well, I guess we'll, uh, the next part of building the S100 is going to be uh, the boiler. But I don't know if I'm going to film that yet. But we'll see. Anyway, seeing how it's 11.20pm uh, on my end, good night.